Good morning. It's early April, beautiful spring day, but you may be able to see, let's see if I can lean out of the way a little bit. On the lake behind me, there's quite a stiff wind blowing out of the north and it makes it chilly. We're only about two degrees above freezing right now. So uh, yeah, it's pretty chilly today, and, uh, but that's okay because I cannot see a cloud anywhere in the sky. So days like this are days you appreciate, the days that you get out because of course the rest of the week it's going to rain. So yeah, so what am I going to do today? Well, I have a hike. I'm going to an area I go quite often, although I expect I'm going to be doing some off-trail exploring, looking for some resources along the way. And if I find anything worth sharing with you, I will. I'll be making myself a light lunch and of course a coffee because this is a hike and a coffee video and it's actually going to focus on my lunch. Now the lunch I'm showing you will not be truly representative of the topic but it will be just the same and that is what do I eat and why all right if you're interested follow along all right I'm going to try something that I have not been able to tr do before only because uh, I didn't have an action camera before and it this is really going to require two hands and I have my action camera I don't have a chest mount but I do have it wrapped around the sternum strap on my backpack and that is I wanted to show you this ascent this is a part of the hike early on in the hike that I take every time I come out in this direction towards this uh, camping site or this site I like to go to and uh, yeah it's I just wanted to give you an idea of the type of terrain that I cover I did put a rope climbing assist up here a few years ago you'll see that in a moment hopefully this is picking up on the camera well enough Strange though, it seems to get steeper every year. I wonder why that is. All right. Hopefully, you can see the rope assist. Nice and tight. That means the air is good and dry today. All right. And up I go. Except I caught on my backpack. I'll try again. All right, I made it to the top and not too badly out of breath, which is good. Short little trail jaunt. And then I'm at my lookout over the lake that I often show you but I think I'll turn the camera off for a few minutes and then pick up again. So question of the day what tree is this and what's so special about it? I'll give you a few hints so in Nova Scotia we have three native pine trees I mean there is others that have been imported but the three native pine trees are a white pine, a red pine and a jack pine and actually I see white pines actually there's a small white pine right there and uh, but these are jack pine now what's unique about them is their cones the pine cones on them you may be able to see them on these trees right here the pine cones only drop and release their seeds when the ambient air temperature exceeds 50 degrees celsius someone tell me why that is I thought I'd give you a, a different look of the lake than I normally do. This is still Susie Lake. Normally, I'm up on a look-off overlooking the lake, and uh, now I'm on another look-off opposite it. So there's the look-off you normally see me taking photos from or taking video from the, out over the lake. Just a, a different viewpoint.
Right, so I'm just about at my location where I wanted to stop and have my lunch today, and it occurred to me after I showed you the jack pine and said, question of the day, and what was significant about it, and well, okay, I won't repeat the question this time, but what I realized is I had intended on following up the last couple of videos when I did exactly that. I said, question of the day, what is this? What is that? What caused this? And I didn't follow up. Now, I was waiting for people to comment it in the comment section and people have gotten them right of course so I just for everybody else's benefit I'm going to just put those out there now what it was so f two videos ago I pointed out a spruce tree that had half of its bark all peeled off up you know rounding up the sides and all the way towards the top porcupine very common for porcupines to do that too spruce trees I've seen them in pine trees I've actually seen them in some very young hardwoods but porcupines will eat the bark and often you'll see the porcupine itself in the asleep at the top of the tree in one of the crooks of the branches so that was porcupine congratulations to everybody who pointed that out uh, Jim I think you were the first in that video to point that out and uh, in the last video there was a couple of things about okay I'm assuming everybody understood when I took a shot of the deer droppings and called it organic fresh natural wild coffee that you knew it wasn't all right I didn't think I would need to explain that but just in case it's not coffee of course it's deer droppings and also in that video I pointed out something else about a growth on a spruce tree no sorry it wasn't a spruce tree that day it was a fir tree and I asked if anybody knew what that was and there was a number of people who got that one right it's called a witch's broom and yes I really did think when I was a young man that that was some type of a nest but now I know what the difference a witch's broom is a growth that the tree creates in response to some type of infection it could be uh, injury to the tree it could be bacterial it could be viral and it could be a parasite of something attacks the tree and the tree responds by kind of growing around the deadened area and creating that little growth of almost looks like a tree within a tree so that is a witch's broom and and uh, they do make great fire starters because they're often dead. I've seen living ones, but oftentimes they're dead. They're usually just much further up in the tree. Okay, so what I'll do in the future is uh, with a coffee and chat video, when I have posed a question the video before, I'll answer it in the future videos. All right? All right, let's get on to making some lunch. All right, so I did jump ahead just to uh, save a little bit of time. I have my water it is hot. Lunch today is the note meal meal that I have uh, made before and talked about before it's everything but oatmeal and that plays into the discussion today as well so I'll put that in and while that is rehydrated in the moment I have a nice chunk of cheese to go with this so the water is hot I think I can turn the fan down on the stove hot well hot enough Put some water in. It doesn't take a lot, not even a quarter of a cup. But I am going to put a tiny bit more than that in. Maybe that much. You could probably eat it right away, but if you leave it rehydrate for a couple of minutes, it uh, actually gets a little softer and easy to eat. Oh, by the way, a number of people have been asking about my stove and pot combination. This is the Lofi, and uh, I'm going to be making a review of it. I'm not sure if it's going to be done today or very near in the near future, but uh, I am, I've used this all winter. I've probably got more time experimenting with this stove than just about any other in my collection. So. And for the obvious reason, I keep bringing it out because I enjoy using it that much. But that's for another time. I just wanted to point out that people have been asking about it. Review is coming shortly. All right. What I'm going to do to, again, save a little bit of time is when this is rehydrated, I'll eat this. I'll have my cheese in the meantime. And then we'll come back and we'll make some coffee. And then we'll have our discussion. All right. Lunch was great. I got my water back on quickly make some coffee here so I'm using the well if you haven't already figured it out where to put the other pieces this is the GSI fair share mug and the GSI infinity mug sits in top inside of that and this my GSI coffee rocket sits inside of that so it's a nice compact thing oh I got to put the coffee in first 
Coffee will be Rampage. And I've shown how to use this device before, so I won't uh, spend any time explaining it. Fill the coffee component. You can only get so much coffee in this, so it's not like you can choke it off. Well, I guess you could if you really tried, you could choke it off, but... Put the hopper on. All I do now is, can I do that with my hands? Yes, I can. All I do now is pour the water in and wait for it to drain through. So I can see it's starting to drip already. And that hopper holds just the right amount of water for the cup. It'll take a few minutes for that to go through. And in the meantime, to keep it warm, I can put the lid on top of there, turn the stove down. All right, that's gonna take a while for the coffee to go through, but as soon as it does, then we'll have our discussion. All right, let's try the coffee. Oh man. You know, I don't know why I don't use that GSI coffee rocket more often because it makes a lovely cup of coffee, as you saw when I made it. Very easy to use. Looks like a fancy gadget, but it's very easy. It actually, you can only put so much coffee in it. You can only put so much water in the hopper on top, and you just have to wait a minute or two for it to go through. And it's slow enough that it brews the coffee and extracts all the flavor without creating bitterness. Yeah, let me have another taste. And it's just cool enough out here that I appreciate using my Infinity mug with the lid on top so the coffee doesn't cool off too quickly. All right, so topic of the day. As you saw from the title, and I mentioned early, what I eat and why I eat it. So longtime viewers of my channel will know that about three, three and a half years ago, I adopted the ketogenic lifestyle. And I did that after considerable thought. And I just want to tell you why I did this the benefits it's given to me, and why you may want to consider doing so at the same time. Now, you're probably going to hear a plane flying overhead because that happens, right? Oh, I don't think it's going to be too loud. We'll just keep going here. Okay, before I begin, i got to say this. I'm not a doctor. I'm not even a nutritionist. I'm just somebody who has done the readings and looked at this quite in depth for myself and I believe I have enough of a handle on it that I can share the highlights for you. In fact, <laughs> sharing the highlights is what this video is all about because this is my second attempt at making this video. And what I found is that uh, this is something you can talk on at length. And the more you talk, the more there is to understand. And well, honestly, the first attempt got boring because it was just getting too long, too detailed, much more than you needed to know to understand the very basic principles. So that's where I'm gonna stay. So again, I'm not going to give you any nutritional advice. I'm just going to share my experience and my story, and then you can decide for yourself if it's something you want to look into. So the background is, uh, even longer time viewers of my channel may recall that seven years ago, I was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer. Actually caught me completely off guard because I had no symptoms, no signs or whatever. Went in for the annual test and lo and behold, here it was, and uh, that summer I underwent some very radical surgery, removed the majority of my colon, and after I recovered from that, I went on chemotherapy for seven months, and after I recovered from that, well, that's when I started looking into lifestyle changes. That was a rough year, it really was, and, uh, but it didn't stop me from coming out into the woods, honestly. If you want to go back and look at those videos around 2017, 2018, you'll see me out here in the woods. I don't look very healthy, but I'm out here. Having looked into the diet that I was on at the time, because what I had learned was the diet that I was on may have contributed to the formation of the cancer, and I thought it was a healthy diet. Turns out it wasn't as healthy as I thought it was. So that's when I started looking into the ketogenic diet and all the benefits it has. And one of the key benefits right off of the top is reducing the risk of cancer, which of course is important if you're already a cancer survivor. You have the uh, propensity to develop cancer again. You really want to do everything you can to avoid that from happening. And diet is one of those things at least I can control. All right, so that's my background story. So what is the ketogenic diet? 
Well, basically it is a diet that emphasizes healthy fats and proteins over carbohydrates. The modern diet, the one that most people eat, actually does the reverse. It emphasizes sugar and complex, or not complex carbohydrates, but simple refined carbohydrates, refined meats, refined things that are unhealthy, have all kinds of additives to it. Those things actually work against your health. And actually, I don't think there's any argument about this now. I think it's well known that we're in a health crisis right across North America and much of the world. A lot of it has to do with the fact that we're not getting enough exercise and time in the woods or whatever it is that you want to do. But our diet has a huge piece of that as well. And it is that modern diet that is contributing to the decline in health. So it is the exact opposite of a ketogenic diet. Now, okay, so what is the big difference between the two of them? I mentioned that the, the ketogenic diet is low in carbohydrates, whereas the modern diet is high in carbohydrates, and that's the key. You see, our body is very adept at burning two different types of fuels, and it will choose the fuel it's gonna burn based on what you feed it. So if you feed it a lot of carbohydrates, it's gonna burn those as blood sugar. It converts them into blood sugars and that's what it will burn. It'll take any excess blood sugar and store it in the muscles until it gets to a point that there is no ability to store anymore. After that, it gets stored as body fat for a later time. That's just the way we were developed over time. That's the way we evolved is to store uh, excess food as fat for fuel for later use. Now, if you deny your body from carbohydrates, you eat more fat and proteins than you do carbs, then your body's gonna to switch to burning ketones. The ketones are what uh, are the result of converting the dietary fat that you eat, or body fat, we'll get back to that in a minute, into a fuel that the body can use, known as ketones. It's called ketosis, so I am in a state of ketosis, burning fat all the time. That's, that's what the ketogenic lifestyle is all about, burning fat in the form of ketones in my blood. All right, so that's basically what it is, but what are the benefits? Well, I do have a sheet of notes here that I'm gonna to refer to just to make sure that I don't miss anything of value. So, and some of these, these are actually pretty well known. I won't get into the details of all of them, but number one, I've already mentioned this one, reduced risk of cancer from all types, reduced risk of heart disease, blood pressure, kidney failure, etc. A lot of those can be traced back to the diet that we eat, the modern American or North American diet. It can also reduce, prevent, and in some cases reverse diabetes or metabolic syndrome. Because diabetes is a condition where you have um, fed yourself so many, this is type two, I'm not talking about type one that you're born with or develop as a young person, but type two diabetes often comes from lifestyle and the body has just become resistant to the insulin the insulin will not function to store the, the sugar in the muscles like it did before, and now it's storing it as body fat, and therefore that's, that's where the uh, problems start from. So what else? Well, one of the things that I've noticed, and uh, it is listed as a common uh, benefit of the ketogenic diet, is it reduced inflammation throughout the body. Now, we think of inflammation in terms of pain in our joints, and yeah, that's definitely inflammation, and I have enough arthritis from old job injuries and the like to know what inflammation and that type of pain is all about, but inflammation actually is throughout your body. You don't feel it all, but all your organs can suffer from inflammation. So reducing inflammation reduces the stress on the organs and allows them to function the way they were intended to. And finally, and this one is kind of interesting, Elimination of brain fog. And I guess the, the um, expression that is often used is hangry. They, you get hungry and you get angry at the same time, or you experience a brain fog because of a low blood sugar level. Well, I'll tell you right now, that doesn't happen for somebody on the ketogenic diet. You don't get low blood sugar because you're not burning carbohydrates. You're not burning blood sugar or glucose. You're burning ketones. They don't go down. So that's the key. You always maintain a steady state of fuel in your body at all times. Now, those are the primary reasons for 
adopting the ketogenic diet, at least for me, those are the ones that I consider them the important ones. But if you're an outdoors person like I am, like many of you are, there are actually some other benefits on top of that. And I dug these up and here's some of the great things about it. The reduced hunger I mentioned a minute ago. So if you get out for the day and you're on the trail or you're working hard doing whatever, collecting firewood and processing, setting up camp and everything, you don't get hungry. And I can go the whole day, if I stay busy and I don't think about it, I can go the whole day without eating lunch and not even miss it. I don't get hungry. I don't get that weak, shaky feeling from low blood sugar because my body continues to burn ketones from the stored fat. We're gonna come back to that in a minute. So that is a benefit right off of the top for an outdoors person. Clearer mind and better decision making. Um, one of the things that can lead to injuries and out here in the woods is when you uh, aren't concentrating, aren't focusing on what you're doing, especially when you're playing with sharp things or hot things. And those injuries often happen when a person is um, not focusing enough and that lack of focus can come from being hungry. So for me, that doesn't occur. It doesn't mean I don't get distracted. It just means that my mind remains clear and that's not gonna to contribute to the injury. Other things might, but not because I'm hungry. Um, now here's an interesting fact, and I, I promise not to do too much of this, but I, I just wanted to share this with you for a moment. Our bodies will store about 2,000 calories worth of glucose in the muscles. That's all they can store on average. Everybody's different, of course. On average, 2,000 calories. That's less than a day's worth of sugar for you to burn or carbohydrates for you to burn. After that, you run out. And that's usually when people start to get that hangry feeling, that weakened feeling, and it takes some time. Now, on the other hand, we have between 130 and 150,000 calories in stored fat, the average person. Some people have more. I have a little bit, probably more than the average, but upwards of 150,000 calories of fat. That's why you'll hear survival experts say food is not one of your survival priorities. Reason being, you're carrying your storehouse of survival foods on you at all times. All you have to do is go through that period of conversion from burning blood sugar over to burning fats or ketones, and you're good to go for upwards of 30 to 40 days without eating. Now, you're gonna lose weight, no, don't, don't get me wrong, and it's better to have eaten, but because, you're, well, let's put it this way. If you're lost and you have no food, you're gonna be on the ketogenic diet within a day anyway. The only difference is you, if you're not on the ketogenic diet now, will go through a period of transition that is really uncomfortable. Some people call it the keto flu. You just feel weak and shaky all over and headachey and everything else. It won't last too long, it doesn't last long at all. And once you have, the body will say, no more sugar, time to start burning fats. And it's that transition over to burning fats where people experience that uncomfortable feeling. But once you're burning fats, you're good to go. So for me, on any given day, I eat a high fat, high protein diet, low carbohydrates, and my body will burn those very readily. If I miss a meal and those are gone from the, my blood sugar, it just starts converting the stored fat to energy seamlessly. No, I don't notice a thing, and that's why I can keep on going for a longer period of time without eating. Let's see if I've missed anything else. Oh yeah, now one more uh, kind of a quick fact on it is weight. Now, most of us, if we're bushcrafters or weekend warriors or car campers, this is not going to make a whole lot of difference. But if you're a long distance hiker, a through hiker, and every gram that you pack counts and you're trying to reduce it, your ketogenic diet actually weighs a lot less than does the standard carbohydrate rich diet. And I have two quick facts on that. Okay, so... It's here somewhere, what the facts are. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna put that in the video description. But if we base it on, say, a 3,000 calorie a day diet, there's a certain weight for a standard diet and a certain weight for a keto diet, and the keto diet weighs less. And the reason is, of course, is fat, is a much more concentrated form of food energy. In fact, you get nine calories per gram of fat, whereas carbs only, and protein for that matter, only provide four calories per gram of weight. So fats have a lot more dense, calorie-rich 
uh, nutrient to them. And that's the reason why you can carry more energy in a smaller, lighter package if you're on the ketogenic diet. All right, we're gonna wrap this video up, but I just wanna have another drink of coffee first. Yeah, you know, um, I talked about the device, the, the GSI coffee rocket for making coffee and what a good job it does, but you have to start with good coffee. You can't use garbage coffee and expect it suddenly to become miraculously good. You have to use good coffee. And for me, it's been rampage all along. So uh, that's part of the reason why it tastes so good. Okay, let's wrap this video up. Now, I wanted to keep this relatively short. And the last thing I wanted to do was come across as if I was preaching to you on something that you need to change about your life. That's not what I'm trying to do at all. In fact, if I can make any suggestions or any give you any advice, and I hesitate to even use the word device, I would say, just look into this diet and look at the benefits and look at what it's all about and see if it's something you're willing to adopt. Even if you don't adopt a full-on ketogenic lifestyle in terms of the ratios of fats and proteins to carbohydrates, just reducing your carbohydrates will go a long ways to making you healthy. So they actually call it a low-carb diet. If I could say anything, eliminate or reduce drastically the amount of sugar that you consume. And it's in just about every prepared food. You really should look at the sides of them. Everything has sugar in it. So if you can reduce sugar, you're, that's the, one of the biggest steps to improving your health right there. After that, get rid of the simple things like white bread and white pasta and white rice and, and get the full grain versions of those things. If you can reduce those amounts of those things as well, you're going to be on the way to improving your diet. Now, there's much, much more to it than that, much more than I'm certainly going to get into in this video, but there's lots of resources out there. If you're interested, the internet is full of it and uh, are full of those resources, and so is YouTube. So I just wanted to give you the basis to pique your interest to see if there was more you wanted to uh, know about this. And that's basically what it was all about. For me, it has done wonders, continues to do wonders. I haven't felt this healthy since well before my development my cancer, let's put it that way. Uh, yeah, okay, that's where I'm going to stop today. If you have any comments or questions, then put them in the comments section below. I have quite a long document here of all the stuff that I wanted to say that I decided not to say. I may actually just drop that into the video description. If you're interested, then there's a lot more there that you can look at. Until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.